new here this channel is all about educative stuff so don't forget to subscribe hit that notification bell and smash that like button for instant updates hey guys welcome back to code 4 today we'll be seeing communication and internet technologies from igcse computer science theory this video is based on the cambridge enders book so let's get started there are three main subtopics under this chapter the first what is data transmission Data transmission is a transfer of data from one device to another. There are three factors that affect this. Direction of data, method of transmission, and method of synchronization. So first, direction of data. We have three main topics under this. Simplex, half duplex, and full duplex. So first, simplex. Simplex means data travels only in one way. It's unidirectional. It can only go from the first device to the second device. So when we are supposed to represent it in a diagram, we have to draw an arrow from the first device to the second device. An example of simplex is sending a signal from your desktop to your printer. Half duplex. Half duplex is when data can travel in both directions but only one direction at a time. This, an example of this is walkie talkies. So when the first person is speaking, the second person cannot speak. But, and after they have finished speaking, the second person can start speaking. So when we're supposed to represent this in diagram form, you have to draw one arrow from the first device to the second device and another arrow from the second device to the first device. Next we have full duplex or duplex. Duplex means data can travel in both directions at the same time, which means the first device can transmit data and the second device can transmit data simultaneously. When we're supposed to represent this in a diagram, you have to draw one line between both devices and put arrowheads on both sides. An example of duplex is our mobile phones. So next, method of transmission. We have serial and parallel. Serial means the data is sent one bit at a time through a single wire or channel. This is used for long distance transfer because a single wire is used and there is a slower rate of transmission because data is sent bit by bit. But because of that it reaches with proper synchronization and is used in USB. Next, parallel. Parallel is when several bits of data are sent through several wires at once. Usually one byte of data is transmer transferred at once and each wire carries one bit. This is used for short distance transfer because there are many wires and it has a faster rate of transmission because one byte is transmitted at a time. But data can get skewed. Skewed is a very important word. It means mixed up or jumbled. Parallel data transmission is used in integrated circuits. So next, method of synchronization. We have asynchronous and synchronous. Asynchronous means data is sent in an agreed pattern with control bits. So if there is a byte of data, the first bit is called a start bit and the last bit is called the stop bit. So this ensures that the reader knows where the data starts and ends. It helps them separate data as it arrives. But the use of control bits makes this transmission method slower. Next we have synchronous. Synchronous means continuous stream of data is sent. There are no control bits, which means it uses something else for synchronization. Synchronous uses internal clock with timing signals to synchronize between the sender and the receiver. The receiver has to count and reassemble the data into bytes because it, they don't know where the data starts and stops. But this is faster. Next, Universal Serial Bus. Universal Serial Bus or USB. This uses a synchronous serial data transmission. It consists of four wire shielded cables, two wires for power and earth, and two wires for data transmission. So what happens when you plug a USB device into your computer? So first, the computer will detect the device automatically because there is a voltage difference. And then it recognizes the device automatically as well. The device driver for that particular device is loaded up, so the communication between the computer and that device then begins. If the device is new, the computer searches for a related device driver, and if it cannot find one, the user is asked to download it. There are some advantages and disadvantages of USBs. So first, advantages. When you plug a when you plug it into your computer, it's usually automatically detected. It can only fit one way, which avoids misconnections. It is of industry standard, which means it can be used on all devices, and it su supports several transmission rates. The new standards are backwards compatible with the older ones. Next, we have disadvantages. As of now, the maximum cable length is only 5 meters. 
your transmission rate is limited to 500 megabits per second as of now and the older standard which is 1.1 may not be supported in the near future okay that's it for data transmission so last time we did data transmission so this is a part two with error checking methods so let's get started so first why do we need to check for errors so basically there's always a chance that data can be corrupted that is modified in some way during the transmission this can happen with any distance of transmission and to avoid this it's very important that computers check for errors and correct them because using the wrong data is going to cause a lot of problems in it. So first, parity checking is an error checking method. In this, each byte of data gets a parity bit, which is allocated before transmission. It's either even or odd parity, which is, for example, a uh, data following even parity has an even number of ones. Data following odd parity has an odd number of ones. Whether it's even or odd is decided by both the sender and receiver. So parity byte is used when transferring a block of information. So basically first there will be 7 bits. For example, let's take this 0100010. So in this there are two ones. So if it's following even parity, it already has an even number of ones. So we don't need another one, so we add zero. So if it is following odd parity, we need to add another 1 to make it an odd number. So that's basically it with parity checking. So next, automatic repeat request. This is when an acknowledgement is needs to be sent by the receiver indicating that they received the data properly. It has something called a timeout which is time allocated within which the acknowledgement needs to be sent. So if the timeout is over and then acknowledgement has not been received from the receiver, then the data is reset. So next, checksum. Checksum is when a value called checksum is calculated from the data and sent along with it at the end. The sender and receiver know how to calculate the checksum and so the receiver will recalculate it and check with the one the sender sent. If both values are same, it is interpreted that no error has occurred. But then if they are different, there is a request sent to resend the data. So basically, we might even be asked to calculate the checksum. So if a sum of digits is less than 256 when converted to binary, then this is the value of it. But then if it is higher than 256, you have to uh, divide it by 256 in long division and then the reminder is the checksum. This is basically a shortcut for the very big method that is given in the book. So next, echo check. Echo check is when the data sent to the receiver is sent back to the sender like an echo. This is not very reliable and is used very rarely. But then if there are no errors, we know the data has been transmitted properly. So this is the end of error checking methods. Hope you found this useful. Tag along for internet technologies. So now the next subtopic, internet technologies. So first, internet service provider. These are companies that provide access to the internet. They charge a monthly fee and they set up an account with a username and password and sometimes even email. Previously, only government agencies and universities were given access to the internet, but nowadays, almost everyone has access. Okay, next. Internet Protocol Address. So, it's basically IP address. This is a unique address given to each device on the internet, that is the location of a device on the internet. It's unique for each internet session and it's given by the internet service provider. It's a 32-bit number. Okay. Only web servers have the same IP address all the time. For any other device, it would change for each internet session. Okay, next, hypertext markup language, HTML. So this is used when writing or developing web pages. So there are two main features, structure and presentation. And these features are kept separate when designing. Okay, so first structure. Structure is the essential part of the HTML, including the meaning and structural markup of the document. Whereas presentation is basically the style of the document, how it will look after including multimedia and special effects, um, using cascading style sheet, which is CSS. 
which is basically color and design and all that whereas structure is where the content is next hypertext transfer protocol or http these are a set of rules that must be obeyed when transferring files across the internet this is represented by a padlock symbol as you can see here or the https the s means that the connection is secure next web browser a web browser is basically a software that allows a user to display a web page on their computer screen they show the result of a html interpreted and translated we usually have some main features a home page the ability to store web pages or sites which is basically bookmarking them history of the websites visited and ability to go backwards and forwards to websites open okay so what is the role of a browser in the process of accessing web pages so basically it sends the url of the website to a domain name system to find the ip address through the ip address using http or https it connects to the web server and then it translates the html and runs active scripts built into web pages it also manages the ssl or tls certificate process ssl is secure socket layer and tls is transport layer security this is for encrypting the process of data transmission across the internet and then it also stores cookies so that's it we have completed chapter 2 from igcse computer science theory in the book this presentation was made from a template by slidesco icons images and infographics were by flatcorn and freepick hope you found this useful thank you so much for watching